Hi, my name is Jay with Kick Foosball Tables. First off, I'd like to welcome you to the Kick family. Today I'll be showing you how to properly set up and assemble your Kick Monarch 48 inch foosball table. I hope this instructional video is helpful. With no further delay, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open your box and take a look at your contents. Then you lay each piece out onto your floor individually. If you are assembling your foosball table on a hard surface, I do recommend they lay it on a large blanket or large piece of cardboard. That way we don't damage our table during the assembly process. Next, you want to match each part to what's inside your instruction manual. Once you've matched each part to what's inside your instruction manual, if you notice any missing or damaged parts, please contact Kick Customer Support with pictures of the shipping label, the box label, the box itself, and the damaged part. Our contact information will be listed at the end of this video. For step one, we'll be attaching our playing field P3 into the grooves on both side panels P1A and P1B. You just want to make sure that the ball entry hole is faced downwards closer to the floor and that the kick emblem here faces outwards. You also want to make sure that the graphics on the playing field are face down. Go ahead and insert your playing field into the groove on the side panel. Then turn the assembly upside down. Insert into the other groove. And you want to go ahead and flip upright. For step two, we'll be attaching both of our end panels, P2, to both side panels, P1A and P1B, using bolts H1 and washers H4. What you want to make sure is that the goalie hole is faced downwards, it's closest to the floor, and that the playing field slides into this groove that you see here on the end panel. Then you want to go ahead and line up both the holes on your side panel to both the holes on the end panel. Insert your H1 bolt and H4 washer into the side panel and into the end panel. You go ahead and secure with the Allen wrench that was provided. Now you do not want to fully tighten your bolts at this time. You want to leave some wiggle room so that you can install the other end panel and both of your support braces. For step three, we'll be attaching both of our support braces P7 to both side panels using our H11 screw and our H10 nut. What you want to go ahead and do first is insert all of your H10 nuts into both of your support braces, making sure that the hole on the end of the nut aligns with the hole on the end of the support brace. Also making sure that the uh, groove on the end of the nut faces outwards. One quick note, what you want to make sure is that the nut is inserted all the way to the back of the brace so it aligns properly with the hole on the end of the brace. Then you will notice that there are four holes here on your side panel. You just want to go ahead and align your brace to one of those four holes. Insert your H11 screw. Now you might need to supply your own Phillips head screwdriver. However, I will be using my impact driver fitted with the Phillips head tip to help speed along this process. Once you've attached your support braces, you can go ahead and go back and tighten all the bolts on both end panels. For step four, we're attaching our straight legs P4A and P4B and our angled legs P5A and P5B using our H3 bolt, our H5 washer, and our handle bolt H8. You will notice that there are two holes here on your side panel and three holes on the other side. The two holes are for your straight legs and the three holes on the back are for your angled legs. One way to determine that you are adding the correct leg to the correct side of the table is you want to make sure that the chrome bulb pattern that you see here faces inwards towards the other leg. Then you want to go ahead and line up both the holes on your side panel to both the holes on your leg and insert your H3 bolt and H5 washer into the bottom hole of the side panel. Then you want to insert your H8 handle bolt and H5 washer into the top hole of the side panel. Then 
Now you do not want to fully tighten your bolts at this time. You want to leave some wiggle room. That way you can install your leg panels. Again, you will notice that there are two holes here in the front and one in the back. We'll be utilizing the first two holes and leaving this back one empty for now. And I'll explain at the end of the video what that third hole is used for. And then again, you want to make sure that the chrome bolt pattern that you see here faces inwards towards the other leg. And we'll be uh, utilizing the uh, two bottom holes and leaving the top hole empty. Then you want to go ahead and insert your H3 bolt and H5 washer into the bottom hole. Then insert your H8 handle bolt and H5 washer into the top hole. Then you want to go ahead and repeat this step to the other angled leg. For step 5, we're attaching both of our leg panels P6 to both angled and straight legs using our H2 bolt, our H4 washer, and our H9 nut. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and insert your H9 nut into all four holes on your leg panels. Make sure that the hole in the end of the nut again aligns with the hole in the end of the end panel. Then you want to go ahead and flip your leg panel upright and align your leg panel to both the holes on your leg and insert your H2 bolt and H4 washer. Then you want to secure with the Allen wrench that was provided. For step 6, we'll be attaching our chrome tube P14 along with our long bolt H14 and our P11 wheels, our H7 nut, and our H6 washer. Next, you want to insert the chrome tube between both of the shallow holes on both of your angled legs. Then you want to go ahead and insert your long bolt between your chrome corner tube pushing the bolt through the other side, then go ahead and add your wheel. You also want to make sure that the bolt does not stick out. You want to go ahead and push the bolt back in to where it's just on the inside of the inner wheel on both sides. Then insert your H6 washer and H7 nut onto both sides of the wheel. Then you want to go ahead and use both the Allen wrenches that were provided and simultaneously turn one clockwise and one counterclockwise until both bolts are tightened evenly on both sides. For step 7, we'll be attaching both of our leg boards P13 behind both of our straight legs using screws H12. The purpose of these leg boards is to kind of stabilize your table. So you want to go ahead and level out the bottom of your leg first prior to installing your leg boards. And go ahead and line up your leg board behind your straight leg. Insert your H12 screw and secure. Now these holes are not pre-drilled so you might need to apply some pressure when screwing in your screws. For step 8, we're attaching our leg levelers, P12, to the bottom base of each leg. This part's pretty simple. You just want to go ahead and screw down your leg leveler all the way down to the bottom base of each leg. The purpose of these leg levelers is to stabilize your table during play, so that if one side's higher than the other, you can just unscrew them a couple notches to even out your playing field. Before we move on to step 9 and insert all of our player rods and attach each player to each rod, I want you to carefully review the diagram that I've attached in this next clip prior to inserting your rods. What you want to make sure is that there's a hole on the correct side of the table where the handles will later go. Rod and player setup. Place four handles on each side of your table in this specific order. Make sure your players are all facing the opposing team and towards the other opponent's goal, not the same team or your own goal. 
one-man goalie versus a three-man goalie setup. With your table, you have the option to go with a one-man goalie or a three-man goalie setup. Most beginners and some others prefer a three-man goalie setup because there's more defense around the goal, making it harder to score and giving their user more control over the field. While some others prefer to go with a one-man goalie setup. If you choose to go with the one-man goalie setup instead of having the other two outer men on the goalie rod, you'll replace them with the four black stop rings. You can optionally place your four green triangle corner ramps on all four corners of your table along with your field lining tape. This is to prevent any dead spots in case you have any at all. Once you carefully review the diagram and once you have all your rods lined up correctly on top of your table, you can go ahead and insert your rods. You can go ahead and insert them about halfway for now, that way we can attach our players. When attaching your players, you want to note that there's a bumper, a washer, then you want to add the correct amount of players per holes in your rod. Then you want to add another washer and another bumper. Then you want to complete by sliding through the second hole. And go ahead and line up your players over the holes on your rod. We'll be attaching our players using our C6 bolt and our C7 nut. Part's pretty simple. So you can go ahead and insert your C6 bolt into the chest of the player. Then go ahead and insert your C7 nut, making sure that the plastic piece on the end of the nut faces outwards. Go ahead and hold the nut in place and turn the player around and secure. For step 10, we'll be attaching our handles P8 to our rod using our H16 screw. This part's pretty simple, so we're going to line up the hole on the handle to the hole on the rod. Insert your H16 screw and secure. One quick note, these handles are really high quality. Most other companies use really cheap rubber slide on handles. Also, these rods are semi-hollow, so they are durable enough to rough play, yet light enough to let the player have full control over the rod. If you need any rod lubricant, please contact Kick and we'll send you a free complimentary bottle. Next, you want to slide your rubber end caps P9 on the other end of the rod. For step 11, we'll be attaching both of our slide scores to both end panels using screws H13. This part's pretty simple, so we're going to go ahead and line up the slide score to the center of the goalie hole. Then insert your H13 screw and secure. Now these holes are not pre-drilled, so you might need to apply some pressure when screwing in your screws. To place your table in an upright storing position, you want to go ahead and remove both of your handle bolts on your angled legs. Gently lift the other side of the table into the upright position. Then remove both of the handle bolts on both of your straight legs. And then you can fold them in the down position. Congratulations! We have finally finished assembling your Kick Monarch 48 inch foosball table. You are now free to enjoy your table with your friends and family. Again, hope the instructional video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please visit our website at www.kickfoosballtables.com or you can email us at support at kickfoosballtables.com. You can also call us at 1-866-844-5425. That's 1-866-844-5425.